You've no doubt heard of a low FODMAP diet. If you have patients who are struggling with GI issues and nothing seems to work, this diet might be worth a try. We're going to tell you all about it. But before we do, make sure to consult with a doctor or dietitian before making any significant dietary changes, including starting or stopping a low FODMAP diet. First things first, what is a FODMAP? The word FODMAP is an acronym that stands for fermentable, oligo, dye, and monosaccharides, and polyols. Oligosaccharides, disaccharides, and monosaccharides are all types of carbohydrate or sugar molecules. Oligosaccharides are types of starches that have 3 to 10 sugar molecules in the chain. Disaccharides have two sugar molecules and include lactose, maltose, and sucrose. Monosaccharides are single sugar molecules and include glucose, galactose, and fructose. And finally, polyols are sugar alcohols like mannitol, xylitol, and sorbitol. So what foods are high in FODMAPs? The list of foods high in FODMAPs is quite long, so we can't list every single food here. But here are some of the heavy hitters that are commonly found in the typical Western diet. Cow's milk, yogurt, ice cream, fruit juice, dried fruit like raisins, dried apricots, and craisins, apples, pears, watermelon, ripe bananas, stone fruits like peaches, cherries, and mangoes, sweet corn, peas, cauliflower, breads, pasta, and cereals made from wheat or all-purpose flour, sugar-free candies and gums sweetened with sugar alcohols, refried beans, garlic, onion, ketchup, store-bought salad dressings, and sodas, syrups, and flavorings sweetened with high-fructose corn syrup. This can be overwhelming for patients because they may feel like there's nothing left to eat. Trust me, though, the list of low FODMAP foods is just as long. Here are a few notable low FODMAP foods. Lactose-free milk and dairy products, aged cheeses, berries, grapes, honeydew, cantaloupe, kiwi, and green bananas, all in small portions, greens like spinach and kale, lettuce, tomatoes, green beans, sweet potatoes, butternut and yellow squash, zucchini, cucumbers, rice, cornmeal, quinoa, sourdough bread made from fermented starter, proteins like beef, pork, chicken, eggs, and fish, maple syrup, stevia, tofu, peanuts and peanut butter, coffee, and beer, wine, gin, vodka, and whiskey. Keep in mind, these lists are not exhaustive. Check out the video description for resources where you can find more comprehensive lists of high and low FODMAP foods. There are a couple reasons why high FODMAP foods create GI issues. First, FODMAPs aren't readily absorbed and may linger in the gut longer than other food molecules. While they are hanging around, the FODMAPs can draw water into the gut and absorb water. This can cause abdominal bloating or even diarrhea. And secondly, they are also fermentable by bacteria in the gut. This means they are bacteria's favorite food. As bacteria feed on FODMAPs, they can produce gas. This is a normal process, but it can create bloating, gas, or abdominal discomfort. You may not know this, but a low FODMAP diet is actually an elimination diet. It's true. The first step of a low FODMAP diet is eliminating all high FODMAP foods from the diet. This can be tricky to do and will take the help from a dietitian to achieve. During step one, patients should eat primarily low FODMAP foods. If it helps, think of it as having a low FODMAP budget. Foods from the high FODMAP list are too expensive, so patients need to stick with the low FODMAP list. Follow the elimination diet for at least two weeks. It's a good idea for patients to write down their GI symptoms before beginning the elimination phase. This will help to establish a baseline and make it easier to determine whether their symptoms have improved on the low FODMAP diet. The second step is to slowly reintroduce some of the high FODMAP foods into the diet and track the patient's response. This can be done one food at a time or one FODMAP group at a time. Either way, portions of high FODMAP foods should be small to start and gradually increase over time. 
During the reintroduction phase, patients should track their GI symptoms closely, documenting what they ate, when, how much, and how they felt afterwards. This will help the GI team connect the dots and determine which foods may be problematic for the patient. In the long term, patients should only eliminate the foods that brought back their GI symptoms. There is no reason to eliminate all high FODMAP foods or stay on a restrictive low FODMAP diet forever, as this can diminish a patient's quality of life and may cause nutritional deficiencies. Go to shop.dietitiansondemand.com to see our FODMAP and GI-related resources.